the gloves are on, which is kind of rare for me, but this product here contains so many warnings that I just felt it was prudent to wear gloves and set a good example to everyone. Now, I don't know if these are California-grade warnings or they're actual real warnings, but it warns against harmful by inhalation and contact with skin, irritating to skin, risk of serious damage to eyes. It's nice that they put this label right around here. May cause sensitization, sensitization by skin contact. Uh, and this is basically it's a photochromic pigment. Um, so this was inspired by the recent discovery of these little ultraviolet cards. And if you look at this little red box here, I'll zoom down a little bit. I shall zoom down so you can actually see a little red box there. This little red box, I shine uh, light on it and immediately red text appears. And this pigment here, this powder, well, here's the light. It instantly changes colour when you put ultraviolet light in it. In this case, it's changing from white to red, but you can also get from white to blue to green to yellow um, and just loads of different colours. It's quite interesting. Anyway, I thought it would be quite interesting to cast into some little silicone moulds with two-part resin. And I have to say, one of the most disturbing things about this to start off with, where's my little, little wooden stick? There's my little wooden stick. It's just how powdery it is. It's very, very powdery. Uh, I have to say, strong feelings for the people at the, who work at this place because they also sell pearlescent pigments and uh, this thing was covered in pearlescent pigment, as are probably their houses. Now, this is way too much. I've already experimented that. This powder is so fine. It's almost like flour and it doesn't take much to do the job, but it's extremely hard to deal with because it is an ultra fine powdered pigment. Um... Much more fine than the uh, the pigments that chain uh, the sort of glow in the dark pigments. So here is two part resin that I'm going to use for this, and uh, this is generic pound shop two part resin, alias dollar store, the British dollar store, pound land. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt a portion into here. I'll put a decent amount in, and then mix it up with this powder. The powder gets everywhere. It's very, very fluffy. This is concerning. Uh, but I suppose that suits the application that could be used in inks and things like that, because they may want colour changing inks. I'd guess it's also used as a colourant in plastic. And one good way to actually test this, if this is going to have the desired effect, is to mix it into the resin. I'm looking at all this wasted stuff down here. I feel like I want to pick it up and kind of like get it into the mix as well because uh, otherwise it's just going to get wasted. And to be honest, I'd rather it was all bound into resin, especially with all those warnings. So let's test this by simply pointing a light at it. And as you can see, it's all changed colour quite vividly. That is most excellent. So here is the uh, what I'm going to put it into. And I shall just raise it up a bit towards the camera for this just so you can get a better view. And I shall put uh, some into this big, huge, flowery type thing, this mould. And then I shall chop it down to try and get rid of the air bubbles. It doesn't really matter too much. It's a quite a finely detailed thing. The bubbles don't really show in these flower moulds too much. And then I may actually make up some more resin and fill the other ones up as well, so we can make lots of little flowers and see how this works. I may actually embed an ultraviolet LED into it as well to see what happens. Right, this is looking very promising. This is looking very promising indeed. I'm going to make that. I'm just going to put it all in the big one, then mix some more and put another one. In the meantime, uh, since this is going to take a while to cure, uh, I shall pause momentarily and I'll be back in a moment. One moment, please. The resin has cured. I've also moulded a few others in glow-in-the-dark resin and just plain resin, which, interestingly, fluoresces under ultraviolet light. I also did mould some ultraviolet LEDs into some of these. Let me show you. If I turn it on, it goes red in the middle, but it doesn't really spread out beyond that. It's almost like when the pigment changes colour, it blocks the ultraviolet. However, I did find a way around that. Let me demonstrate. I got one of my 3D printed candle flames, the file is on as a short on the internet, and I coated it in the resin, 
And when you turn the LED on inside it, it does actually cause the whole thing to progressively change the darker colour. I shall put that to the side, because the bit we really want to see is these items here. So I have my big leak tracer ultraviolet wand, as used by mechanics to trace uh, basically coolant leaks uh, looking for the fluorescent colour in them, and refrigerant leaks. And if I move that out of the way so it doesn't skew its little thing, you can see it's doing a good job of changing colour. But now, if I pass it over these, you can see the ones that have the pigment, because when I pass it over, they change vividly to the red colour. That's pretty good. That is very impressive. And I'll just run it over this as well and make its little thing change. That's a really interesting result. And if I turn the light off now, well, let's give it another boost with this. And I'll turn the light off and take the exposure off. And you'll see the glow-in-the-dark ones, because they're quite obviously fluorescent. Watch your eyes, it's about to get bright again. So, um, this card, I did augment it. I coated the back of it, so instead of just being the front that uh, says UV and it goes dark, now when you hold it over the back, the whole thing goes dark, it changes colour completely. It's interesting stuff. So uh, this pigment came from a UK seller. I shall put a link down below. Uh, it's a, a fairly specialist seller uh, on eBay in the UK called Perfect Pearls and Pigments. I'd guess there are other sellers selling this in America, unless, of course, California has had its way, in which case, no, you won't be getting anything because it might be dangerous. But um, interesting stuff. Uh, you can see how this has gone completely red. Uh, I might even be tempted to get some of the other colours, although I will say, again, it's a very, very fine powder. Lots of scary warnings. And when I opened this up, there was just no way of opening it without the slight dust coming out. So wear suitable skin protection just in case. I do know that the uh, light sensitive materials can cause skin sensitization, as happens with the resins used in 3D printing. But that is it. It was an interesting experiment. It was quite a fun thing to do. Uh, and it's very, very vivid, really vivid, given the amount I put in it. Didn't take much pigment to actually have that strong, colourful effect. So you could, technically speaking, you could make ornaments or even do a painting with colours that would appear white uh, until you took it outside into sunlight, and then it would suddenly change into those vivid colours. Quite a fascinating material. Very interesting indeed.